Hey, this is Josh Alexander with Orange County Housing Market News, and today I'm gonna to be answering two of the most common questions I get from sellers. One, how long to expect it to take to sell your home in today's market? And two, what you can be doing, especially during COVID, to make sure you're not only selling it as quick as possible, but also getting the highest dollar amount. So let's get into it. Okay, sellers, so you're probably sitting there trying to determine if now is still a good time to put your house in the market as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year. So unless you've been hiding under a rock, you probably already know that it is a seller's market, but you might be trying to figure out exactly how hot of a seller's market it is. So as you probably know, if you've watched my episodes before, I love data. So let's look at a few data points just to kind of illustrate exactly how hot of a seller's market it is right now. So this year compared to last year, we actually have 60% less homes on the market in Orange County. So you're looking at an extremely low inventory, the lowest inventory we've had in Orange County to start off in October in over 15 years. So if you look on the other side, that's the demand side, we're actually at about 30% higher than we were this time last year. So that's over an eight year high for the amount of demand that you have at the beginning of October. So if you take those two numbers together, you've got 60% lower inventory and 30% higher demand than last year. You can see that we're in an extremely hot seller's market right now. So what does this mean for you in terms of how long it's going to take to actually get your home sold if you place it on the market today. Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers. So if you look at this chart that I'm gonna pull up right now, this year, the expected market time, which is the time you put a for sale sign in your house and put it on the MLS to when it goes into escrow is right around 38 days. Now, if you take that and look back a year or two previous, Last year, we're looking at 86 days was the expected market time. The year before that, in 2008, 105 days for the expected market time. You have to go all the way back to 2012 to get anywhere close to the current expected market time that we're seeing today. So you can see, again, we're at an eight-year high in terms of the seller's market and how hot it is. So this is just another indication showing you that if you place your home on the market today, you're gonna have a lot of interest because there's just not enough inventory in the market for all these buyers trying to take advantage of these extremely low interest rates. Now let's break this down even further. So let's look at by price point because it's going to differ depending on the different price ranges you have your home in. So I'm going to pull up a second chart here for you to check out. So this shows any home in Orange County that's placed on the market that's under $750,000 right now is taking an average of 28 days to sell. That's extremely fast. Last year at this time, you were looking at 56 days for a home under 750,000. So if you look at the 750,000 to 1 million, again, 27 days from when you put the for sale sign in your, um, in your yard to when it goes into escrow compared to last year, 75 days. You go all the way down the list as you get into higher price properties, the time on market is going to increase. That's just typical because you can see that when you go to a high price, especially above 2 million, there's just not as many buyers. Most of the buyers are gonna be under the $1 million price point. So those are markets are gonna go a little bit quicker than some of the higher price markets at the 1.5 and above. So as a seller, you probably have at least a general idea of how much your home is worth right now. Whether you've used things like the Zestimates or the Redfin Estimates, you have at least a general idea of what your home is worth. So you can take that and look at this graph below and that will give you a reasonable expectation on how long it's going to take to put your house into escrow once you get it on the market. If you're listening to this through podcast form, then I will provide a link in the show notes. So go ahead and check that out on your free time. But just know that this basically just breaks down all the different price ranges in Orange County and how long you can expect it to take to sell your home. So sellers, before you go popping a bottle of champagne and saying, hey, I'm gonna get my house on the market, it's gonna go into escrow in less than a month, everything's gonna be great, I'm gonna close before the end of the year, let's go ahead and pull up this last chart because I wanna make sure you have a realistic expectation of what's going on when you place your house on the market. So this last chart I'm pulling up right now, is this just shows you basically how many homes are sitting on the market still for more than 60 days. And if you saw that last graph I pulled up, that's more than the average time it takes to sell a home 
home right now. It basically shows you how, what percent of homes are still sitting on the market after 60 days. So let's look at them real quick. So the under $500,000 mark, you have about 30% of homes that have been sitting on the market for more than 30 days. Between the 500 dollars and the $750,000 mark, you have about 16% of homes sitting on the thing. 750 to 1 million, you have about 23% of homes. And you can kind of see going down and down and down that it goes higher and higher as you get to those higher end properties that take longer to sell. Now, the reason I bring this graph up is because you don't want to be that statistic where you're ending up over what the expected market time is for your home. And so let's go over a few ways that can really make sure that you're selling your home as quick as possible and for the highest dollar amount. So that way, if you do place it on the market, you can try to get yourself within the average range of what it takes to sell your home right now based on the current market conditions. Okay, so let's look at the first one and the most important one in terms of making sure you sell your home as quick as possible while still getting the max amount of offers and ultimately getting the highest price point. And that is pricing your home correctly. So I know I bring this up almost every single video I make when I'm talking about selling your home, but pricing your home correctly, even in a hot seller's market, is still extremely important. If you do not price your home correctly, you're going to end up being one of those statistics that it's going to take over 60 days for your home to sell, and you're going to end up doing price reductions. And data shows time and time again, if you have to start doing price reductions, you're ultimately have a very high chance of selling your home for less than what you could have if you priced it correctly. So you need to make sure that when you're pricing your home, yes, we're in a hot seller's market right now, but you're pricing it on the high end of market value, on the high end of the latest comps that just sold. So if a comp sold for $720,000, it's the same thing, model match. You can place it a little bit higher than that, but if you're placing it on the market for $800,000, it's just going to sit there. Buyers have been in the market longer than usual because there's so low inventory, they're having to place offer after offer after offer. So a lot of, a lot of them have been in the market for months at this point. So they have a good idea of what the general prices are for homes. And if you overprice your home, they're going to know that immediately. So you need to make sure that yes, you're pricing it on the high end of market value, but you need to make sure it's still within market value. Otherwise you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot and your house is going to be sitting on the market longer and longer. And especially right now, as we're going into the election, which I talked about during the last video on how that impacts the housing market, as well as the holidays, you really want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success to get it in escrow as quick as possible so you don't have to deal with the lower demand that's going to be coming over the next few months. Now, it's still going to be a hot seller's market for the rest of the year, but it will start to slow down a little bit as we approach November and December. Okay, so the second thing you need to be doing to make sure you're selling your home as quick as possible as well as for the highest price is that you have to have professional photographers and videographers go in there to make sure your buyers are getting the most amount of information about your property as possible. Because right now, because of COVID, we're not allowed to do open houses still, and the majority of buyers are getting all of their information about your house from behind the computer screen. So if you're just doing the bare minimum and just taking 15, 20 pictures, even if they're high quality pictures, it doesn't really give the buyer a good idea of the general layout of your house as well as the overall condition. So what you need to also be doing at the same time is making sure that you're having those Matterport tours taken. So if you're not familiar with those or maybe you've seen them before, it's basically where a person can go into a website, click a room, spin in 360 degree circles, see everything, and then continue clicking through the entire house. And that's going to give the buyer a much better understanding of the general layout of the house, the general condition of the house, so they know before they even go tour the property if that home is going to work for them or not. That's going to give you a much better success rate and often will be able to get you to have buyers place offers on your home without even stepping foot in your property because they have a really good idea of the general layout and condition of the house. So if you are going to place your home on the market, make sure you're not only doing the photos, the high quality photos, but you're still also doing videos and those Matterport tours as well. So the buyer has as much information as possible to work with before making a decision on what homes they want to go check out. Okay, so the third thing you can do as a seller to make sure your home selling is quick and for as much money as possible is to get a professional stager to go into your house and stage your property. So this is extremely important, again, because buyers a lot of times aren't able 
able to get into your house very easily, you want to make sure that those pictures online look like HGTV because a lot of buyers right now are expecting when they buy a property that everything looks like an HGTV property. So if it doesn't, then again, the buyer might pass and go for something else that does. So staging your property can cost as little as a few hundred dollars. So taking that money and using that investment to make sure your home looks as good as possible and as close to a model as possible is going to give you those buyers that may have passed on it if you didn't have everything put together or everything was coordinated and all made sense. It's a much easier way to sell your property and make sure your house looks as good as possible when you're trying to get it sold. And if your house is vacant, so if you already moved out of it, it's even more important. So those vacant properties right now, when you take pictures and videos of them, they can only do so much because a lot of buyers aren't able to picture the couch over there, the dining table, a TV over here, how everything looks put together. So those stagers really help create that scene where the buyer can imagine themselves in the property, sitting on the couch, sitting in the dining table, dining table and it gives them a much better understanding again of the property itself and it gives them that emotional attachment to it because they can picture themselves in it. So staging is extremely important in today's market so you need to at least consult with the stager whether you use them or not it's up to you but at least have a stager come out give you an idea of what they can do to make your property look better they'll give you a price and then you and your agent can kind of determine if it's going to be worth it to have your home staged or not. Okay, so item number four, and you've probably heard it time and time again, but first impressions are everything when it comes to homes. So if you have a front yard in your house, you need to make sure it looks pristine. So if you have empty flower beds, you have bushes that are dying, you have brown spots on your grass, you really need to go through and make sure everything looks as good as possible because especially right now during COVID, there's a lot of buyers out there because it's a little bit harder to get inside of houses to take that tour. As soon as it hits the market, they're driving by your neighborhood and they're looking at your house to see, hey, does this person have any kind of pride of ownership? Are they taking care of their house? And if you have problems with the front yard, a lot of times buyers are just going to drive right by and go on to the next property. So a few easy things you can do to really fix that to make sure you're making that great first impression uh, that really don't cost that much money. One, rent a pressure washer from Home Depot or Lowe's or buy one if you think you might use it over and over again because it does come in handy for cleaning cars as well as cleaning your house. Take that, wash off, and do a general cleaning of the siding of your house, the pavement, and really just get everything looking as clean as possible. It's an easy way that you can really make your house look new again without having to go through and spend the money to repaint everything as long as the paint is in decent condition to begin with. Another thing you can easily do is just go buy some flowers from Home Depot. If you have empty flower beds, put flowers in them. It makes it really easy to do. They're not that expensive. And it really makes that first impression on the buyers that says, hey, they take care of their house. If you already have flowers and you have bushes, everything looks fine. Another easy thing to do is put some new mulch underneath everything. It just, again, spruces everything up, makes it look new, makes it look like it's well taken care of and creates a good first impression for buyers. If you have patches in your grass, pull them out, put some new grass there. It's not that expensive to either have it grow it yourself if you have some time before you're gonna list it, or you can buy the patches that you can put in there and it basically makes everything look like it's green again. Either way, all those recommendations aren't that expensive. It might cost you a few hundred dollars total for all of that, but it's gonna make a significant difference in that first impression for those buyers that are driving by. Okay, so the last recommendation I have, number five, which doesn't apply to everybody, but this is more towards the people that have had homes they've lived in for a long time or have an older home. When you walk into your house, if you have a house that hasn't been painted inside the house for 10 plus years, it's probably a good idea to give it a fresh coat of paint. So if you have kids like myself that write on walls, dents, scratches, all that kind of stuff, it could leave a very negative first impression on those buyers that are looking for something, again, that is HTT ready. So if you go in and you have a nice fresh coat of paint, yes, it might cost a few thousand dollars to do, but when buyers walk in, they smell the new paint, they see everything looks light and bright and clean, that paint job will usually pay for itself plus some and get you more offers and higher priced offers because everything looks new again. Okay, and the same goes for carpet. So if you have carpet that's over five, six, seven years old and it's got stains on it, it has a lot of wear and tear, it's probably a good idea to get it replaced with something that's not maybe super expensive, but at least looks nice and new. So the only caution I have with the carpet replacement is that you will turn off some buyers that want all wood flooring or laminate vinyl flooring 
flooring. So that is something you have to talk to your agent about depending on the area and the price range you're in. It might be a better idea if you have carpet to replace it with something different, spend a little bit extra money up front. But usually you wanna have flooring that looks good. So if your flooring has some wear and tear on it, it might not be a bad idea to spend, again, usually a few thousand dollars. But if you do that, it leaves a great first impression Buyers really like to have that new feeling on the floors. And again, it pays for itself and usually plus some when you're getting offers on the table. So obviously painting your whole house as well as replacing all your flooring is not gonna be something that everybody is going to need to do. And really what it comes down to is your individual house. So the best thing to do is talk to your agent. They're gonna be able to walk through your property with you and say, these are the projects you should be doing. They're gonna cost you the least amount of money to give you the most return based on the area you live in, the price point your home's at. They're gonna have a much better understanding of what you need to do based on your individual circumstances, as well as how much money you wanna put aside. Because yes, maybe it will sell for more, but do you really wanna spend another three or four weeks getting your home fixed up, ready to go, when you can put it on the market right now and maybe get a little bit less, but avoid the headache of all the construction and everything that needs to happen to make sure it looks like an HDTV house. So again, the best thing to do on this last one is make sure that you consult with your agent and so they can give you a better understanding of the best way to move forward to maximize your profit and make sure that it's gonna be within your timeline and within your budget. So with that, that's all I have for you today. So I'll be back again next week with some more information about the housing market. So stay tuned for that. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye. If you found this podcast useful, please hit subscribe and leave a review below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any family or friends that want some more information about buying or selling a home or just want to stay updated on the Orange County housing market, please share it with them. It'd mean the world to me. Thanks.